Hi, I'm Ksenia, your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. Thank you so much for joining me. It's lovely to have you with me. A big welcome, especially to anyone who's new to astrology. This is a channel where you can learn and grow your knowledge of astrology in a great community that supports one another. And if you're an old friend, thank you for coming back and joining me again. Don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe, do all that rigmarole. I hate asking for that, but it needs to be done. Um, to support this work. So please don't forget to do that. Plus you'll get updates on all the latest videos telling you about what's in store for you in this week's Astro Weather. I especially want to say thank you to all my beautiful bronze, silver and gold star patrons as well. We are having such a great time on that platform. Um, I'm getting the feedback for the videos I'm posting on that channel, usually about the new moon, about the full moon and a specialty video each month teaching some interesting aspect of astrology has been beautiful and bless you all. Kisses to you all. I love you very much. For the price of a coffee each month, you get three really in-depth astrology videos. Plus, there's all sorts of goodies and extras as well. So head over to my Patreon page if you want to find out more about how you can participate in that community. I am also preparing a very special karmic new moon report for uh, my patrons this uh, coming week. That's going to be up very, very soon. It is a very powerful new moon. And I spoke about this in my interview with Crassy recently, uh, where we're looking at the karma of a skip step new moon. So that's going to be explored extensively for my patrons who receive my new moon reports. Check that one out. Also, I am preparing a nodal inversion and nodal return video, especially for you, my beautiful patrons. So catch that one up on the channel very soon. Now, there's a lot of specials running at the moment on my website, and uh, I think it's important that this is shared with the community. I, mean, I know a lot of people hate oh, advertising. I don't want to hear about all your specials. I don't want to hear about it. I just want to get to what's happening for me. I understand that that's where a lot of people are coming from, but the practitioners on my wellness um, page, my, my Astro Wellness Hub, are actually really concerned with the state of the climate and energetically of things on planet Earth right now, particularly where I am in Australia, in Victoria, where we've got this very draconian lockdown occurring. Um, and so God bless my beautiful wellness practitioners who share with me on my page. They are offering specials at the moment to support people through this time. Uh, Tess, my shaman, is continuing to offer her special. Usually her, her sessions are $150. Now they're running for, for the duration of lockdown. She's told me she wants to run this special uh, at $120. So a bargain. She gives so much time and energy. Her sessions are usually, you know, over an hour and a half, you know, very intense um, and deep spiritual work that Tess does. Ksenia, tarot card reader, is currently offering a fabulous special a discount of $20 off her usual, this is Australian dollars too, by the way, off her usual um, report that goes for 40 to 50 minutes, looking at the tarot of whatever question you want to see answered, whatever um, you know, knowledge and insight from spirit. From her. She's a very spiritual woman, a very old soul um, that she can find through her tarot readings for you. So that's another special that's being offered. And of course, we have um, wonderful Joanna, who is a Vedic astrologer in the school of Ernst Wilhelm doing cards of truth readings. Uh, she is offering an hour and a half reading for the price of an hour at the moment. Uh, and all my readings are in Australian dollars. Please check them out. If you're needing support, if you're needing guidance, my beautiful practitioners want to share their skills and abilities with you to support you through this very, very difficult time. I've also had magnificent um, feedback on the uh, past life regressions that people have undertaken with Robin. I mean, I, I cannot begin to tell you the phenomenal emails that I've received. People sharing with me how it's transformed their lives, how they finally make sense of, oh, I've got goosebumps just thinking about it. They finally make sense of why they've had trouble in a certain area in life. When they go back in their past life and they say, oh my God, this is what happened to me. Now I understand. Now I know why this has been a struggle for me. And in seeing it, in experiencing it with a gentle, guiding, motherly soul like Robin, people have been able to absolve those issues and purge and release. Like, 
like quite literally most people writing to me have been saying I've been on the toilet all day <laughs> for the last three days since I had my session I'm purging and releasing so much stuff it truly does happen and um, so Robin she's not offering any specials at the moment but she's a wonderful source of support for people going th uh, who need to release old karma in this very obviously karmic year 2020 so do check those out the links are in the description below Thanks for sitting through all the advertising. God bless you for, um, for <laughs> sitting through that. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I very much appreciate you um, hearing what I have available to support you through this time. On to the weather. This week, we have a very, very busy week for the sun. The sun is really, really active this week. Now, of course, the sun's active every week. It's a massive nuclear explosion occurring constantly, 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 but it's a very busy planet. Sun, star, whatever you want to call it. In astrology, it's considered to be a planet. Obviously, it's one of the luminaries. But the sun is where the focus is this week. The sun is doing all the action in the astrological skies this week. So let's explore what's happening this week with the sun. Firstly, on the 12th of September, that's when this video will go up, and we are having an opposition. The sun will be at 19 degrees of Virgo opposing Neptune. Now this happens every year. We get a sun opposition to Neptune every year. So it's not an unfamiliar transit, um, but it's still worth knowing about because we're going to feel it on this day, the 12th of September, that's in Australia. Um, it will be sort of either the 12th or maybe the 11th of September, depending where else in the world you actually are. But this is an energy that, that gives us a heightened sensitivity. Neptune is very sensitive, very watery kind of energy, very ethereal, very um, emotional kind of energy in a sense. It's not emotional like the moon is emotional, but it's, it's tapped in, tuned in to other realms, to energies, basically. Neptune is tapped into the energies that are out there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when we had Mars and the moon conjunct uh, just last week, um, Sunday, week ago, oh my God, I could barely cope. I just wanted to curl up in a ball in bed. It was just so intense. People with a strong Neptune in their chart or Pisces or a you know, strong 12th house energy perhaps as well, their sensitivity to energies is off the charts. It's, it can be very overwhelming at times. And of course, with all these intense energies around playing out through 2020, people with a, sense, a high sensitivity to energy are going to be feeling things deeply and experiencing things very deeply. We need to show compassion to one another, basically. We need to love one another and support one another. If somebody is suffering, if somebody is not coping because their sensitivity is so high, wrap your arms around them, give them a hug, you know, bake them a baked dinner or something, you know, do something to love people who are struggling at the moment with these intense energies because there's a lot of sensitivity on the planet. Now, we've talked a lot in the last few videos about the sensitivity that's coming with Mars squaring these guys down here. Of course, that is going to give us um, heightened agitation, heightened you know, sort of explosive reactions and, and volatility. Yes, and that's a form of sensitivity too. And we need to be compassionate to people who are feeling that way too. People who are anxious, people who are fearful right now, people who are, you know, on edge, you know, and, and like a tinderbox ready to just explode. We need to be loving to one another because love is the only thing that's going to see us through the next few months of, of energies. And on this day, the 12th or the 11th, depending where you are in the world, this is where we're going to need to, to enact love and compassion. Neptune is compassion. Love and compassion to embrace people in their sensitivity. Whatever that displays like aggression, anger, upset, frustration, you know, can't cope with the energy. I, I'm overwhelmed. I just want to, you know, hide away from everybody in the world and run away. Um, we need to be loving and caring and compassionate to one another on this day because sensitivity is going to be heightened between the sun and the moon's uh, sorry the sun and neptune's opposition that's what will be brought out in society as a whole now obviously when i do these readings it's a very general read for what is going on on the planet it's not a read that says oh you know well you must have your moon here and you must have this sun here and and i'm not breaking it down for each individual person obviously this is general playing out it can vary greatly depending on what's going on in your chart but as a general rule this is what's playing out heightened sensitivity we also feel very unclear on this under this energy about our direction 
What should we do? How do we react? How, what steps should I take? I just don't know. What is the right choice? There is some confusion about our direction and our futuring because the sun has to do with our actions in the world and the uh, 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 as well as our confidence as well and Neptune mixes things up and confuses things we just don't know you know what we're not confident about the right choice to make or we're not confident about what action what step to take next maybe in reaction to say something that the government's doing or maybe in reaction to something that our family member is doing or maybe in reaction to sort of a job situation well what do I do should I leave that job should I start a new job should I move to a new country should I what should I do um, there is this you know feeling of, of I need to move forward but I don't know what to do that can be very present under this energy as well. Neptune does have connections to toxicity. A couple of the planets have connections to toxicity, but Neptune is one of them. And so be, be very careful about what you eat on this day, depending on where these um, signs, Virgo and Pisces, fall. If either of them are in the sixth house or the first house, be careful about what you put into your body. But for all of us, we need to be careful about the kinds of energetic environments we find ourselves because our, our sensitivities are heightened if we're in a toxic environment with you know lots of fear mongering and people being aggressive and what have you. It's going to be dreadful for our energy on this day. So be very discerning about what the environment you're in is like. Be very discerning about um, the food that you're putting in your body. Be very discerning about the music you're listening to or what you're watching on TV. Um, be discerning because toxicity will um, prove to be a struggle for you on this day. Now, as I said, the sun is confidence and some people on this day might feel that their confidence is a bit undermined and a bit um, sort of not, not the, the rug pulled out from underneath you, but suddenly what you felt confident about, you're not so sure of anymore. Maybe you thought that this piece of activity that was going on in your community was the right thing. And then you step back and you think, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. I don't, mm, I don't know. And your confidence in what is happening in your immediate environment, your confidence in yourself can be a bit undermined on this day. Maybe through some other person who comes across your path, who gets you thinking about a different topic or is critical of you. Um, not that this is a critical aspect, I might add, though, but sort of... Um, we can sort of feel a bit deceived perhaps or taken advantage of and that undermines our confidence. Neptune in the shadow side is to be deceived. When we're having this hard aspect, which is an opposition, then we can see some of the shadow side of Neptune coming out in, in play, which is, you know, somebody comes into our life, we're deceived, they tell us something and then we're left scratching our head, I don't really know, what does that mean? And we, we just don't have the confidence in our own uh, spirit in our own feelings in our own intuition even under this energy so be careful on this day that this can this can be how this might play out but remember it happens every year it's not like oh my god it's dire and the world's going to hell in a handbasket no 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 this happens every year and it's only going to last for a day or so you know till the sun moves beyond the orb of this op opposition so maybe five days at, at best we might be feeling this intensely particularly though on the 11th or 12th um, and we need to know how to work with this energy so if we're prepared if we know okay I'm going to be feeling like this I'm going to be sensitive somebody might deceive me I need to understand that maybe I'm not going to be feeling as confident as I usually would about my choices in life then we just roll with it we allow it to flow past us and wash over us and we move on so aside from feeling a little bit lost and a little bit like our confidence is undermined, the sun is also our generosity. The sun is our warmth. It's, it's the energy of love and enthusiasm that we have on vigor. We have vitality that we have for life. And when we have an opposition from Neptune, it's going to obviously be quite affected. How that might play out is that we might be taken advantage of people, as I've sort of already alluded to, but people might take uh, advantage of our generosity. They might take advantage of our warmth, of our loving spirit. So if we're for, forewarned and forearmed, then we know this could happen, then we're prepared. Okay, I'm going to be careful about just how generous I am with splashing the money around because people might take advantage of that. You know, uh, I'm going to be very careful about... Um, who, as I've already said, who, I, who is in my immediate circle. I'm not going to allow toxic people in my immediate circle because I've got a lot of love that I want to give to people at the moment and I don't want people taking advantage, toxic people taking advantage of this warmth and this love that I have to offer. So there are a few themes that might be playing out on this day to be wary of. 
Now on the 15th of September, the sun moves along a little. So this was happening at 19 degrees of Virgo. But on the 15th of September, the, the sun will have moved a couple of degrees along to 22 degrees of Virgo. And when it does that, it's going to be making a trine aspect whoop, to these guys up here. Gorgeous writing style, hey. Um, so it's we're getting this beautiful trine and it is a beautiful trine this time can bring us blessing thank god we need this momentum now and of course coupled with the uh upcoming new moon very very powerful so we've got a beautiful trine coming from the sun to pluto on this day at 22 degrees because pluto is at 22 degrees currently um and so at 22 degrees not only are we having a beautiful trine between the sun and Pluto, but we're also having um, the sun conjuncting the fixed star Denebula. So we're going to get a lot of this a mixed energy of Denebula, fixed star, and the, the energy of Pluto trining the sun. What does this then mean for us on the 15th? Well, first of all, a, a trine between the sun and Pluto gives a lot of uh, restorative capacity. Wow, we could use this. Wouldn't it be great to see people's livelihoods being restored, people's um, ability to generate income being restored? Wouldn't it be wonderful to see people's, uh, you know, their willpower being restored and rejuvenated under this energy? And certainly that's what can happen. We might, it mightn't happen for everybody. As I said, you have to see your own individual chart and how it's playing out with this energy. But this is the general feel for the collective. This could be very positive willpower in a healthy way is activated and enhanced and restor restoration um, particularly for people's careers I feel because the sun has a general connotation to our worldly activities um, obviously the sun is what we all circle around on in the solar system it's where we shine and it's where we get our self-confidence from and career and worldly achievements is usually the main focus in life. Yes, relationships obviously are another important part of life as well, but the sun pertains to career and worldly uh, accomplishments. So it's in these realms we might see a regeneration for a lot of people. And that brings me a lot of hope in the face of what is going on right now in the world. Now also a trine between Pluto and the sun uh, represents strategy and it represents a well-directed enthusiasm a well-directed passion so uh you know you, you're going to be able to strategize well on this day if you if you're making plans for some new business if you're making plans to do something with your family or to do something in your home this is going to be a great day to work out a strategy okay on wednesday we're going to clear out all the junk out of the garage on thursday we're going to do you know paint the garage on friday we're going to you know uh set up our new gym equipment in the garage you know you can strategize and plan you know i'm <laughs> I'm very geared that way. My kids are sick of my lists all over the house. <laughs> I'm going to do this, 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 this. But it's actually a really good day for strategizing. It's a really good day for planning um, under this energy. Not only that, as I said, well-directed passion. So Pluto is passion. Oh, just like I must do. I'm going to get in there and nothing will stop me. I have this willpower. That's Pluto. And the sun making a trine here gives you a passion that is directed into a really healthy avenue, a healthy stream. It's not like you will, your passion is directed into stalking someone. No, it's, it's going to be your passion is directed into creating that new home gym. So you're going to keep fit no matter what happens out there in the world. If you can't go to the gym and do your, you know, your exercises, you're going to create that home gym. And I'm just a silly example, but this is an energy where you get, your passions are going to be very well directed and oriented to healthy manifestations so that is that's another beautiful thing that this is bringing us pluto is as i've already alluded to our willpower and our ability to self-direct is really strong on this day you know we will have um, great willpower great energy to do what whatever it is we want to do with our lives. You know, maybe we've always dreamed of writing this great novel. And um, on this day, we're like, right, no more procrastinating. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to start typing while I'm writing this novel. We have this, this ability to really channel energy well. So whatever it is that you've been looking to achieve, whatever it is that you've been looking to actually accomplish, now is the time. Keep in mind, though, we are in Mars retrograde. So initiating, and I've said this in the last few videos, initiating anything that involves Mars energy 
is is not uh, not encouraged. So if 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 your um, self directioning that's coming out of this is like I am going to take such and such to court because I'm sick of the way that they have ripped me off and. I've got to say, if you if you take any action regarding Mars retrograde, it's not going to be in your favour. But if you're self-directed, you know, doing something that you've you've already been working on, you know, or a project or some creative endeavour, the sun is hugely creative. I mean, think about the sun. Without the sun, there is no life on Earth. No sun, no life on Earth. No sun, no amoeba in the oceans, no, no, uh, you know, frogs growing, um, sorry, fish growing legs and walking on land, you know, nothing would have evolved on the earth if it hadn't been for the sun. The sun is the ultimate source of creativity for life on planet earth. And so if you're looking at a creative project on this day, this is a great time for self-directioning, particularly if it's been something that you have been working on already. Let's say you've got you, your novel that you're working on, you've got it all mapped out. You know exactly what characters and da-da-da-da. You just haven't sat down and started writing it yet. Well, go for it on this day. Force yourself into it. You will have a lot of willpower to get things going. If it's something new, if it's something new, I'd hold off until after Mars retrograde or else you may just waste your time. Because Mars, and I'll just point out, Mars, while the sun is creative power, Mars is entrepreneurial. So if you've got an entrepreneurial idea, such as I'm going to write a novel, it's going to make me a million dollars, I'm going to be so rich, you know, <laughs> that's Mars. That's, that's use, using this creative concept to be entrepreneurial. Mars is also anything that we initiate. And this is why Mars retrograde can be very, very difficult this year. Because Mars is what we initiate. Mars is the initiatory energy. Mars is taking action. And while Mars is retrograde, taking action is not advised. You know, taking, um, you know, initiating some new something or other. And that is why, I hope I'm making sense here, that is why I would recommend your self-directioned um, sort of activity pertaining to something that you've already been working on. Not something that you are initiating brand new. So I hope that makes sense. Self-directioned activity for some project you've been working on or you've had in your head or you've done a little bit of dabbling in, get it going, get it happening, get on it. That's an energy that will support you. If it's a brand new idea, then that's an initiation and that's a Mars energy and you it's, it's going to be a waste of your time. So hold off. Maybe, you know, you might like to sort of jot down your idea in a notebook or something, da -da -da -da, write down your idea, come back to it after November and get going on it then. Um, so that's, I hope I'm, I'm making sense, but this is a great time for self-directioned activity regarding something that has already been in the works, in the pipeline in some way. One of the cool things that this energy will bring, and again, just like the transit of the sun to Neptune, which happens annually, the trine of the sun to Pluto also happens annually. In fact, it happens twice annually. So this is not an unusual transit to be experiencing. But it's on this day that we might find that whatever we ask for, we receive. So maybe we might, might want to ask for a promotion. Maybe we might, might, might want to ask for a loan from mum and dad for something. And maybe we might want to ask, uh, you know, this the high school for a bit of leniency uh, for your son's project to get in, um, you know, a time extension or something, or the university for a bit of time extension for a submission of an assignment or something. Whatever you ask for under this energy, you stand a great chance of receiving. So if you need something in life, set it up so that you ask for what you need on this day, the 15th of September. Because under sun, try and Pluto, what you ask for, you can very often receive. And I would go so far as to say what we ask the universe for, we can very often receive. It mightn't happen instantaneously like that, but it can come our way. It's like a, not our prayers will be heard. The, the Pluto has connected to sort of other realms, other entities, other energies. So they will hear what we ask for. And it mightn't happen instantaneously, but they might set the wheels in motion. So it's a great time to pray on this day. A great time to ask the higher powers that be for their support for planet Earth on this day. And particularly for anything to do with the fixed star Denebula. 
I'll just draw Denebula on here so we, we know that we're talking what we're talking about. Here is Denebula roughly at around 21 degrees of Virgo. So Denebula is a fixed star that has the nature of Venus and Saturn. Now, if you've got Venus conjunct Saturn in your natal chart, you have no doubt, and you've done a bit of research into astrology, you've no doubt come across the fact that it's a really hard configuration to carry in life on Earth. And nobody will deny that. It is challenging. Saturn restricts and blocks and makes us wait for the things of Venus in our lives, for wealth, for love, for the, the beauties and the pleasures of life to come our way. It's not easy. But Saturn conjunct Venus in ancient astrology is known to bring about great occultists. If you have Saturn conjunct Venus in your natal chart, you have great capacity, particularly if it's in a house like the 8th house or the 12th house, you have a great capacity to understand hidden mysteries, to understand occult energies and perhaps even astrology as well it's not usually these two aren't usually connected with astrology but astrology is an occult practice so in that sense yes but to understand secret texts hidden mysteries um, maybe deep ancient uh, knowledge that is what's seen with a venus conjunct saturn and denabula is a star with the nature of venus saturn so it is an astrology and occult star. It gives powerful passions, strong sexual desires. So very eighth house kind of energy here that we're looking at. It gives an increased knowledge of the hidden sciences, like I've said, and secrets. So on this day, when we've got the sun conjunct in a bulla, making a beautiful trine to um, Pluto, this, this doesn't happen annually. This, this uh, very rarely happens. In fact, this will probably not happen again in your lifetime that the sun will conjunct Denebula making a trine to Pluto. That's the rarity. Every year, twice a year, sun trines Pluto. We know that's going to happen. When, when the sun's over here in Taurus, it's going to trine Pluto again. That will happen. But the sun trining Pluto while it's conjunct with Denebula, this astrology and occult star, that's probably that's only going to happen once in your lifetime. That's a rare event. So what we ask for on this day to do with Denebula has a great potential to be activated in our lives. Maybe you want to understand astrology more deeply than you do currently. Ask the universe on this day. Ask the higher powers on this day to give you the knowledge it just might be answered for you. Ask for the wisdom to understand secret texts and ancient mysteries. It might be revealed to you on this day. Ask to be able to, you know, experience the, the more eighth house energies, maybe astral traveling or um, energetic healing or uh, some kind of, not so much miracles are seen with this, but the ability to access the, the higher realms, the hidden realms, the, the the power of your chakras. Ask to be able to access those things and to, to energetically work with those things, you know, perhaps to receive um, kundalini energy or um, to sort of open up your chakra energies um, in a powerful way. All of these sort of eighth house occult type um, mysteries and, and energetic practices, you may just receive the blessing. So it is a powerful day, a rare day, a special day, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Make sure. You, like, I'm going to be setting aside some time to, I like to write letters to the universe and then offer them up to the universe through a, like a little candle ceremony or something like that. Great day to do this, um, to ask for what you want, particularly anything that has to do with the nature of Denebula and it may very well just be answered for you. If you want a better sex life, that's your day. <laughs> Remember, Denabula is the uh, connected to strong sexual de desires and powerful passions. So ask away, peeps. Peeps, sorry. My kids would just be like, Mom, <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> All right. 17th of September is the next little bit of activation with the sun. And on this day, by this time, the moon will have moved around to be joining the sun. 
here in Virgo and that is when uh, we're having this very karmic new moon in Virgo very very karmic and and that's due to the transiting skipped step that will be activated now um, skipped steps with the Sun and the nodes occur very regularly you know like twice annually that will happen also but to have a new moon skip step is beginning something fresh that has a lot of karmic weight to it you know a lot of absolving the the karma from the past and establishing something for the new now I'm going to talk in extensive detail about this in my new moon report available uh, to my patrons as I said in my intro um, for the price of a coffee <laughs> every month you'll get access to these extensive new moon full moon and um, added bonus video reports that I produce so uh, if you want to know more about the new moon and its karma and the involvement with the skip step and the fixed stars check out that that at my patreon page on the 18th the day after the new moon in Virgo as the Sun moves on the sorry as the moon moves on get it right we are going to have another trine to a different planet in this set and this will mean a trine to Saturn hope that's making sense there so the Sun will have moved on a couple of degrees and it'll be lining up with Saturn and I think I've got them sort of back the front there to be honest <laughs> because Saturn's closer to the end of Capricorn how about I do that let's not confuse peeps people uh, there we are so we're having a trine to Saturn on the 18th and this is a very positive karmic influence especially coming straight after the new moon um, that is so heavily karmic as well uh, the energy of a trine between Saturn and the Sun can mean that uh, we, we, we take our aspirations and dreams and goals very very seriously we're, we're very we're, you know very mature and grounded and practical about what it is we want to accomplish in the world about our worldly achievements and we can even be a bit stubborn about trying to achieve them with this energy as well so if you if you have something on the agenda that you want to accomplish it's a great day for digging in your heels you know working hard at it um, Saturn is to do the hard yards and we might find that on this day we have what it takes the perseverance the endurance to do the hard yards to make some sort of aspiration come into reality or start to fruit for us and of course as I said this is a very karmic energy and so it, it's entirely possible that this is um, some karmic fruiting that we will be seeing regarding our aspirations Saturn represents the elderly old people time extended time and having to wait so under this influence we might feel more inclined to respect and honor the elderly the elders in our life it might be a time when you want to connect with a father figure because both the Sun and Saturn connect to the um, elderly masculine authority figures in our life so we might want to connect with a father figure we might want to as a collective honor the elderly in some way uh, and certainly you know for all the upheaval this pandemic is causing to our economies and to people's lives which is quite devastating the one take-home from this is that in the spiritual realms it has been noted that society has honored the elderly and protected the elderly and in a Western society where we kind of almost discard our elders um, you know lock them away in a nursing home or what have you and um, forget about them a la Grandpa Simpson in The Simpsons you know um, this is, is a beautiful thing that we've done as a collective you know we have um, protected the elderly honored the elderly and respected their, their, their right to life and that's been noted in the heavenly realms so on this day it's entirely possible that in spiritual realms we may be receiving the fruit for the honoring that we have done this year of our elderly of our wisdom keepers of our aged people that is entirely possible that there might be some karmic fruiting that occurs in some way on this day for what we've done to protect and preserve and help um, the frail and elderly in our communities 
on this day we might be feeling like honoring traditions in some way more um, maybe we might even feel like honoring authority in some way now don't ask me how that might play out my mind is a blank on that but that is one of the energies that we would see with this because Saturn is tradition and the Sun in a trine with Saturn likes to honor tradition likes to honor authority in fact both the Sun and Saturn are energies of authority the Sun is the kingly energy like the King Henry the eighth what a what a example but you know like what I say goes kind of thing but I will be benevolent about it not that King Henry the eighth was but you know I will I what I say goes listen to me obey what I say because I'm gonna look up you know I'm gonna be benevolent I'm gonna make sure that everybody's okay that's that's Sun energy Saturn energy is right let's put rules and restrictions in place let's make sure people abide by what they have to do both of these energies are authoritative types of energy but in different ways Sun Saturn in this instance might mean that we are um, honoring of authority or respectful of authority or recogni recognizing authority in some way in our lives as I said don't ask me how that might play out but that is one of the energies of a trine from Sun to Saturn the other thing that can be playing out though with this energy of Sun trine Saturn is a releasing of collective limitations that can be occurring so it's like we realize and the Sun will illuminate what our collective limitations are because Saturn is our collective limitations it's the rules the regulations the boundaries that we have on ourselves as a collective of people and the Sun will be illuminating what these are where you know where are the brick walls in our life where are the blockages as a collective and personally too so you you are probably going to find that you will receive some illumination about where the restrictions are where the limits are in what you can achieve what you can do what you can and can accomplish but the good thing because it's a trine is that you'll recognize what the limitations are and Saturn energy can give you the perseverance and the endurance to overcome the limitations that are there so it's a, it is quite a beneficial energy the Saturn Sun trine now it can be a very good day for any hierarchical organizations and companies structures businesses or you know if you're in a, a family type situation that's very uh, you know um, hierarchical or patriarchal or something like that it's actually going to be a good day for those energies um, you know maybe it might mean that there's a lot of patriarchal benevolence uh, maybe it might mean that father figures have a lot more say have a lot more um, influence than they otherwise might so this that's the energy of this day and it's only going to sort of be a day or two that we feel this energy but it's there um, however the karmic influence of the new moon will still be in play because the moon and the Sun will be separating and still within very close orb on this day so the karma of this new moon will cause us and then the following um, trying to the Sun uh, to, to Saturn rather will be causing us to question well what are the good actions that our governments that our hierarchies that our patriarchal institutions that our father figures what are the good actions that they have undertaken we'll be looking at that and therefore what is the positive karmic fruit that might come from these actions now uh, I know there's a lot of animosity about governments and structures and hierarchies in the world right now and a lot of anger and a lot of fear let's face it let's be realistic but at the same time I think this energy might cause us to perhaps um, try to balance things up Libra is a sign of uh, of balance and harmony but Virgo is trying to fix things trying to get you to that stage of balance and harmony so this Virgo energy might be playing in here to say well okay let's try and fix things let's try and see where the governments or where father figures or where authority figures have actually done good things and let's look for the karmic fruit of that what's the res what's the good results here that we can see playing out so if your government has taken any beneficial action over you know the last say couple of weeks or something like that 
the fruit might be there ready for you. The fruit might be available to us as a collective on this day. So let's keep in mind that even though 2020 has been a year of upheaval and difficulty and challenge, it's not all bad, you know. Uh, yes, there's some difficulty and challenge, but what I have seen happening is people supporting one another, people rallying around one another, people giving love to one another and caring for one another's situations. And it's really brought home to me the value of our relationships with one another and our community relationships as well. So let's take the positive out of this because this is a positive aspect. Let's take the positive out of this and let's look for the positive, um, you know, the silver lining around the clouds, so to speak, or the rainbow in the stormy sky. Let's see what is good here. Let's ask ourselves what is good. What What is the good that has been done? And I think keep that positive mindset under this influence and we might see a lifting of vibration that that changes energy going forward and of course that would be wonderful i want to keep hope alive here it's not like mars squaring all this stuff that's playing out till november it's not like the the future is fixed the future is determined and oh my god we're going to hell in a handbasket no we have free will we have the ability to choose. We have the ability to decide, I'm going to lift uh, my vibration and I want to lift everybody around me into positivity, into hope, into praying for support from the divine. I want to uh, take positive steps forward in the hope that things might change from what is the, the potential is. Because yes, Sorry, I'm going off a bit of a tangent here, but yes, this is difficult and it's going to bring difficulties. But then we've got a support here, a support mechanism that's playing out. So let's use it. Let's rise up. Let's, let's generate positive energy so that we can transcend this current frustrated, anxious, um, heavy energetic mix that's going on. Let's use this positivity to our best advantage and let's look for the good and let's look for the karmic fruit of the good decisions that have been made and the good actions of hierarchies. Let's fix what is not right and let's balance up and look for, you know, look at the, okay, what's positive here? What's negative here? How can we work with this energy? So I hope I'm making sense here. All in all, in a nutshell, the energy of the sun trining these planets this week is going to bring more positivity than not. So deep breath. Let's work with this energy as best we can. There's going to be a lot of karmic reckoning going on. Let's try and bring karmic abundance as the result and the fruit here. So how is this going to be playing out for each individual? Well, let's take a whiz around the signs. How about we start with Virgo? Because that's where all the action from the sun is taking place this week. So Virgo, let's let's do you first. Keep in mind there's a Virgo new moon this week. If you want the full, extensive, deep report on that for the price of a coffee each month, you can get this deep report at my Patreon page. So do check it out. I go into great detail about the karma of this particular new moon. Um, but also... On the 15th of September, we have Sun trying to Pluto down here, and this is falling in your first house and your fifth house. There's the ability because of this on the 15th to uh, you know, experience a lot of restoration. What are you restoring? Maybe um, it's a restoration of the self and the self-identity and the self-valuing and the self-initiation, um, self-assertion. Um, uh, self because the sun is in your first house. And so then you might, might have felt thwarted in past weeks or months. You might have felt that you have no control over your life, no direction uh, in your life that, that you can sort of grasp onto, cling onto. And under this energy, it can come back. That can be restored to you. You might find that under this energy, your ability to direct your life it suddenly blossoms for you, you know, maybe a couple of months ago, you might have lost a job or something, or maybe a couple of months ago, um, there might have been, you know, a need to move house, and you just feel like life's been a bit out of control. Under this energy, it, for you guys, it can feel like you're getting back the, um, 
you're regenerating that you you're finding your willpower again you're finding your direction again you're finding your solid ground again also sun in virgo trine pluto can um, be a good indicator of you know you can ask for what you want and ask actually receive it in life so what is it that you want maybe you want to have more willpower maybe you want to have better health first house is health maybe you want to have more independence uh, and these first house things can actually be granted to you under this energy on this day the 15th of September it's a very powerful day for asking the universe for what we want and potentially getting the wheels in motion to receive so in a nutshell, Virgo, this is the day, the 15th of September, where you can really um, be restored, you know, your willpower, your self-assertion, your independence um, can all be restored to you in some way, in some circumstance in life. And it's a day when you can ask for what you want with regard to willpower, self-assertion, health and well-being that can actually be answered for you under this very divine energy which i talked about in the introduction all right if we are libra rising people well the energy of the sun new moon and the trine from the sun to pluto is actually being uh, playing out effectively in your 12th house and this is where there is a tremendous amount of regenerative willpower that's available to you on the 15th of september now on the 17th of September, we're having the new moon here in Virgo, which is very, very karmic. And especially for you guys, because it's falling in your 12th house of past lives and past life rewards and karma. Now, if you want to know more about that new moon, do check out my new moon report available to Patreon page uh, people. Um, it's um, price of a coffee every month. You get access to a, a, a extensive new moon report, an extensive full moon report and an extensive um, specialty astro report each month plus lots of other bits and pieces and goodies um, for my patrons so if you want to know more about the karma of this particular new moon report do check that out but on the 15th uh, that is going to be when you can assert your willpower for the purposes of restoration so what does this mean in the 12th house it might mean that your spiritual life is being reinvigorated and renewed maybe in some way you lost faith over the last couple of months with all the drama and the crazy crazy on planet earth and your faith or your connection to higher beings to the angels to heavenly realms was wobbly and now at this time under this energy on the 15th sun trine pluto that is restored that is rejuvenated for you because pluto sun is to restore and to transform and bring back to life so that may be a realm for Libra rising people where, you know, your faith has been wobbly. I'm a Libra moon and quite frankly, I've been a bit ugh, wobbly with things in the last week or so. And so I'm really counting on this energy to, to play out for me where I can restore my, um, my spiritual life back to what it was and stand more solidly um, in, in my spiritual life. So that's one of the main areas for a 12th house uh, in, uh, for Libra, rising sun or moon. That's one of the areas where we're going to see um, the energy put. Not only that, but it could be a creative project as well. Uh, it could be some sort of film that you're making or poem that you're writing or a uh, song, album that you're producing. These are high level creative projects that the 12th house is associated with. So this could be the realm where you are experiencing some sort of a, a restoration, some sort of a, you know, I haven't had any enthusiasm. I started that album, that musical album, you know, six months ago, and I've just been plodding, no energy, no vigor for it. And lo and behold, under this, that's restored to us. The, the creativity, the divine influence, the divine, you know, energy flowing through us that enables us to undertake creative projects um, actually comes alive and is rejuvenated for us on this day. I hope you did watch the introduction though, guys, because I did speak about how there's a difference between um, creative invigoration that's occurring on this day and the um, the reason that we can't initiate new projects with the Mars energy that is um, playing out through uh, Mars retrograde at the moment. So check out the intro for more depth about um, you know the, the nuances there. 
But that's where we can be finding there's a lot of uh, restoration and we have a lot of willpower to restore and rejuvenate something in our life. Um, it's also in this, these realms that we can ask for something that we've always wanted and it can actually be granted to us on this day, the 15th of September. Very, very powerful day. So what is it that you've wanted in spiritual realms? What is it that you have wanted in creative realms? What is it that you've wanted in realms to do with miracles? Because the 12th house is miracles, especially miraculous healings. Um, so what is it that you want the divine to do for you? You Libran people have a tremendous privilege under this energy that happens once in a lifetime. The sun trine Pluto conjunct with Denebula, not going to happen again in your life. This is a very special energy and a chance, a day when we can ask the divine to support us in some way, provide a miracle, transform our lives, uh, give us some creative blessing or some spiritual wisdom and insight that can come to us very, very powerfully. We can receive uh, under this energy what we ask for um, if we know what we want. So what is it in these realms that you're desiring? Make sure you don't neglect asking the universe for it on this particular special day. Now, moving along, let's have a look at Scorpio rising people. Well, the energy of the sun is in your 11th house. So we've got a few things, as I've described in the intro, happening, Scorpio, um, in your 11th house. This is for Scorpio sun, moon or rising. You can take all three and check them all out. Uh, but for... Um, for rising, it's falling here, obviously, in the 11th house. And this is where we're having an extremely karmic new moon on the 17th. Very karmic, very much about uh, the fruiting of past deeds. Uh, and I talk extensively about this in my new moon report available to Patreon subscribers. Um, for the price of a coffee each month, you can have access to uh, the new moon report that's very in-depth, the full moon report that's very in-depth, and a specialty video. This month, I'm preparing a video on nodal returns and nodal inversions and what they mean for us. So check that out if you want to go more in-depth and get more, more knowledge. But that's happening on the 17th. A couple of days before that, on the 15th, there is this trine to Pluto occurring with the Sun conjunct Denebula, a very powerful transit to be experiencing. It's a once in a lifetime kind of experience actually as well, because that will never occur again while the Sun is in a conjunction with Denebula. So this is a day for restoration to do with the 11th house. What, what can we restore? What can we regenerate? On this day and of course the 11th house is friendships it might be a, a friendship circle that you haven't had anything to do with for six months and on this day you reconnect and everything is made right and it's like well we've never feel like we've never been apart you know we've we haven't seen each other for six months and we've been in like in Victoria we've been in lockdown haven't been able to connect and now we can you know one example but you know it's a chance where friendships can be restored and rejuvenated and new life breathed into friendships or networks or social groups that can happen on this day. So it's a big opportunity for that. It's also um, the 11th house has to do with our dreams and hopes and goals and ambitions. What are your dreams, hopes, goals and ambitions? New life can be breathed into those. Restoration can be given to those areas of life. Maybe you, you, you take down a dream off the shelf and dust it off and... Whew, breathe new life into some aspiration to produce wonderful film or to have your own company or do some sort of side venture in life like um, 11th house can indicate all sorts of aspirations and dreams and goals so for Scorpio rising people there is a rejuvenation of some dream a restoration of some dream that's available to you under this energy not only that but because of the nature of the trine between Pluto and the Sun conjunct Anabula it's a day when you can ask the divine for what you want or ask you know, people in your environment and life for what you want and you may very well just receive it. This is a day when you could ask a friend for something and receive it. You could ask the divine for blessing upon your dream, your goal, your aspiration, you know, some uh, ideal that you have that you want to see come to fruition. And the divine can set the wheels in motion for that to actually be a thing for you on this day. It might happen instantly, but the wheels can certainly be set in motion in the divine realms. 
because of the involvement of Pluto and um, the involvement of Denebula. So what is it that you want? What, what kind of friendships do you want? What kind of networks do you want? What dreams and goals would you like to see manifest in your life? Ask the universe for it on this day. We're not going to get a chance in our lifetime to do that again um, under this same energy. So do it. Don't be afraid to lift your prayers to the heavens um, regarding what you want to see happen on, on the earth, in your life, with your friendships, with your networks. And I might also add, Scorpio, this is the realm of community. Fourth house has to do with community and heritage and roots and lineage. But the 11th house has to do with humanity, the collective, um, what we are experiencing human-wise. So you, you Scorpio people have a tremendous power available to you on the 15th to be able to, on behalf of the collective consciousness, ask for support from the divine for humanity. Please do. <laughs> Please do. Um, you guys are carrying a, a wonderful responsibility and a wonderful privilege of being to being able to intercede for the divine. Uh, sorry, intercede with the divine on behalf of humanity on this day. So please, <laughs> please do. All right. For Sagittarius rising people, This energy of the sun and all its activity in this week is falling for you in your 10th house, Virgo. So on the 17th, this is where we're having a new moon with the sun and moon. And this is a tremendously karmic new moon. And I want to point out that for you guys, it's very significant because this new moon is activating not only your 10th house, but the angles, 7th and 1st house. And these are tremendously important um, houses in astrology all of these are getting activated in a very karmic way with a skip step new moon by transit and i talk extensively about this on my patreon channel i go into great depth with a big long reading for all signs about this particular energy for the price of a coffee every month you can have access to new moon reports full moon reports and a specialty astro video every month extra over and above what i provide here on youtube this month I'm preparing a nodal inversion and a nodal return video which can be very pertinent to you seeing as the nodes are in your sign, your rising sign, sun or moon sign, it depends uh, what one you're watching. But very, very pertinent to you that, that nodal return and inversion video that I'm preparing there. So that's on the 17th, the new moon in your 10th house. But a couple of days before that, on the 15th, we are having a very important uh, event which will be the sun making a trine to Pluto. This is a very very powerful uh, aspect and it's only going to happen once in a lifetime that the sun will trine Pluto while it's conjunct the fixed star Denebula. So this is a special day where you can actually have some sort of restoration in 10th house things. What does that mean? Well it might mean you feel like you've lost a career opportunity and on this day suddenly it's made available to you. Suddenly it's there for you. Maybe there was some worldly achievement that you wanted to succeed in, you know, and, and make happen and you thought all was lost. And on this day, it can be restored to you. Maybe you, maybe you had a desire to produce some sort of a, a wonderful album uh, of music. Maybe that was what your worldly aspiration was, 10th house, or maybe a book, or maybe a film, or maybe you had a worldly aspiration to be head of a company or to run your own business or whatever your worldly aspiration was. And maybe, say this album of music you wanted to produce, it just, it wasn't happening. You know, there's been a, a, some thwarting of, you know, the studio that I wanted to book has been booked out for the last six months and I just can't seem to get in. Today's the day. 15th of September where there might be an opportunity for you to get into that studio a, a, a booking is cancelled they offer it to you you go in there with all your musos you make your album boom the restoration of some worldly achievement the chance to make it happen maybe you've had um you know your eye on a particular career you went for a <clears throat> excuse me you went for a job interview they offered it to someone else and you thought oh that's blown 
and then the person didn't accept the job, they come and offer it to you. You know, you're the next in line. Would you like this job? And you're like, yep, restoration of some worldly, you know, rise in status, the worldly potential, worldly uh, achievement that is comes back to you, that is restored for you on this particular day. So a couple of illustrations that can play out in a multitude of ways. But what we're talking about here is the restoration of some worldly achievement or social status maybe the, the restoration of a legacy that you want to pass on when you are gone um, in some manner as well. Not only that, because of the conjunction with Denebula and the aspect to Pluto that's occurring on this day, the 15th of September, this is a day when you can ask the universe for what you want and it may just be granted for you. Absolutely fabulous. So what is it in 10th house realms that you would like? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to be known for? What do, what do you want to pass on from your life to those who come after you of value? Maybe you want to write a book um, that, that's, you know, like Charles Dickens, you know, write a book, leave a legacy. Maybe you want to, uh, you know, pass on some, some beautiful farm um, to your those children who come after you. So you want to establish a vineyard or something like that and leave that for the children and the grandchildren who come on down your lineage because the 10th the <clears throat> house is about our, what we leave for those who come after us as opposed to the 4th house which is what comes to us from those who've gone before. What is it that you want to achieve in those realms? Today's the day you can ask the universe for those things and it can be supported for you. It can be given to you. Now it might not happen instantly on the day you ask but the wheels in, in divine realms can be set in motion because of this energy that's playing out. So take the time to ask spirit, to ask the divine for what it is you want in terms of worldly aspirations, legacy that you want to leave, <clears throat> excuse me, legacy that you want to leave and um, you know the social status perhaps that you want to achieve. So for Capricorn rising people, this energy is falling in your ninth house. On the 17th of September, there is going to be a new moon that occurs in your ninth house. This is going to be exceedingly karmic, especially for you Capricorn people, because this new moon will be squaring the nodes in your house of past lives. So it's a karmic new moon because it's squaring the nodes. That's called a skip step. And it's occurring in the sign of Sagittarius or squaring uh, the node in uh, North Node, in, sorry, South Node. Past lives are re represented by South Node in the sign of Sagittarius. Past lives also seen through the 12th house and very karmic skip step. So this is a very powerful new moon in your life. I talk extensively about the new moon and its effects in my new moon report available available to my patrons now for the price of a coffee every month you can receive you will receive an in-depth new moon report an in-depth full moon report and a very in-depth astro video this month I'm preparing a video on nodal returns and nodal inversions and what that means so if you want that information and you want to go deep with this information and how it might be affecting you head on over to my patron page the links in the description below and get all the juicy stuff so, but on the, the, the uh, 15th, a couple of days before this very powerful new moon, we are going to be experiencing a trine from the sun to Pluto while the sun is in conjunction with Denebula. This will only happen once in your lifetime, that you will have a trine from the sun to Pluto while the sun is in a conjunction with the fixed star Denebula. What does this mean? Well, it means the chance to regenerate something, to reinvent something and reinvigorate something, to... Breathe new life into something that has to do with the ninth house. Maybe it will be to connect with an inspirational figure. Maybe you'll get the chance to regenerate a relationship with some sort of a father figure in your life. You know, this is the house of fathers, father figures and relationships with father figures. So maybe you've been estranged from your father or maybe you haven't had a very close, deep relationship with your father for many, many years. And under this energy, it can be reinvigorated, rejuvenated. You have the willpower and the ability to make it happen under this energy, which is lovely. It might mean that uh, some sort of cultural connection is reinvigorated for you. you may, maybe, you know, you, you grew up in China, but now you live in America and, you know, you've lost all ties with your cultural roots. Well, under this energy, you might decide, I want to just reconnect. 
I want to reinvigorate some of those ties to my cultural practices. And so you might get the chance to do that under this energy. Maybe you, you have um, studied something, you began a degree and for some reason you couldn't finish the degree uh, in whatever field, doesn't really matter. Um, and, and because this is the, the um, house of higher learning. You, you started a degree and you chucked it in when you were three years in and you thought, I just can't do this anymore. I'm exhausted. I need to get out and earn some money. I haven't got time to study anymore. Let's just get on with life. And then you, you regret that and you think a couple of, you know, a year or so later, oh my God, I wish I'd actually finished that. Well, this is the day when that can be have new life breathed into it and it can be reinvigorated for you and restored for you and regenerated for you and you can actually go back and finish a degree that um, you know maybe you'd thought was all done and dusted. Or it could mean that, you know, it doesn't have to be a university degree. It could mean that you'd started a course, maybe one of my webinars or maybe with Astrolata or, uh, you know, one of the other amazing astrologers out there online. And you have started something, but um, it lost its momentum. It lost its drive and you haven't finished it. Well, under this energy, you might find you've got what it takes, the willpower to breathe new life into the completion of that course or that webinar or that piece of study or that book that you were reading about some philosophy or something like that. So there's a, a breath of new life that happens under a trine from the sun to Pluto. Now remember that it's also conjunct Denebula. So you, uh, particularly Capricorn people in the house of higher learning, might suddenly get a great desire to understand um, secret texts, astrology, occult practices, anything to do with chakras and energy healing and all of those sort of um, mystical areas because Denebula activates that sort of thing. This is also a fabulous day to ask the universe for what you want, but also to even ask other people for what you want. So maybe it's a father figure and you've wanted to, uh, you know, um, connect with a father figure and, and you've been hesitant to do so. And But on this day, you can ask, you know, father figure, inspirational figure, guru figure, do you want to come around to my home for dinner? Because I'd really like to, you know, connect with you more or learn more from you or establish a better relationship or restore a relationship. And if you ask on this day, you can very often get what you want. So that could be the restoration or, or of a relationship. It could be the, um, the chance to learn from a father, father figure or uh, an inspirational figure or a guru type figure. On this day, it could mean that you want to ask uh, a university to be, you know, can I come and complete my degree, which I started three years ago, but I've kind of had a break from, can I, and you can get what you want. It's also an energy uh, where you could ask the divine for what you want. This because this is the house of belief. This is the house of uh, faith. And so uh, there's every opportunity for you guys to ask the angels, to ask the divine, to ask spirit for support on this day. So it's a tremendous privilege that Capricorn people and Scorpio people, I would add as well, also have this privilege um, to ask on uh, the divine for assistance on this day. Please do. Please ask for uh, the divine to step in and fight on our behalf uh, on planet Earth right now, given the upheavals. Please ask the divine Capricorn people. Um, please ask the heavenly realms to help us all to ascend or transcend everything that is unfolding on planet Earth at the moment. There's a tremendous privilege here for you Capricorn rising people and a tremendous responsibility for you Capricorn rising people to, to do so to connect with belief, to connect with the divine um, energy, the energy of faith and hope and optimism and to lift vibration that way. Okay, for Aquarius rising people, this energy, if you're an Aquarius rising person, the energy of the new moon is falling in your eighth house. Now, this is a tremendously important placement. The eighth house has to do with change and transformations. And certainly Aquarius rising people who've had all this mumbo jumbo going on in their 12th house for the last year have been going through massive change. And that's not always easy. Yes, Aquarius is an energy um, that likes progress and moving forward, but there's an energy of resistance with fixed air too. Um, it can be very stubborn. Now, it's not saying it's stuck in tradition, but it can be very stubborn about 
the changes that need to be made. If it doesn't agree with the changes that are being made, it can get very about it, you know, very fixed, digging in the, like a mule, not budging, you know. Um, it needs to feel that there's progress in the changes that are being made. It needs to feel that there's momentum in the changes that are being made. Otherwise, it's not going to be interested. You guys have been going through big upheavals, 12th house upheavals, and now you've got a new moon in the house of change, in the house of uh, transformations. This is a big time for you on the 17th of September, new moon here. I go into great depth about this very karmic new moon that is squaring both of the nodes, what we call uh, a, a transiting skip step. Uh, um, I go into great depth about this in my video available to my patrons for the price of a coffee every month. You get a very in-depth video all about the new moon, a very in-depth video for all signs, both of them, uh, about the full moon and a specialty astrology video. Uh, this month I'm preparing a video on nodal returns and nodal inversions and what they mean for people. But also on this day, if you happen to be Aquarius rising, so not on this day, two days later, just two days earlier on the 15th, so you've got the new moon playing out very karmically here in the house of change um, on the, the 17th, but on the 15th you've got the sun making an exact trine to Pluto while it is conjunct the fixed star here, Denebula. And this is going to be a very important day, especially in the lead up to the new moon that's occurring. It's a day of transformation, doubly so for you guys. It's a day of restoration and breathing new life back into something. So you guys have probably experienced a lot of crisis this year, a lot of upheaval this year. What has that been doing in you? This, year, this day, September the 15th, is a day when there can be a breath of new life. Like maybe uh, you've been dealing with um, a court case and, and because this is the house of other people's money and what you receive from a legacy or a court case or a will. Maybe you've been dealing with uh, monetary outcomes for a court case or something like that. On this, and on this day, you know, you thought all was lost and you've been exhausted by it and, you know, frustrated by it and it's brought crisis into your life. And on this day, new life. Something's transformed. Something's changed. Something's um, regenerated for you. I wouldn't say resolved. Um, this is not a house of resolutions, but um, it is possible that something is changed and altered and new life is breathed into, say, some circumstance with a will or an inheritance or a tax return or a you know, legacy or a, some sort of a, a monetary receipt from a a divorced partner or something like that. That uh, is one example of how that might play out. But it's a day when you have the willpower and the energy to transform something and restore something in your life regarding other people's money, but also uh, regarding some crisis situation in your life. So money aside, there might have been some crisis situation you were dealing with and you're like, this is never going to resolve. I'm so frustrated. This is really difficult. House of crisis. Boom. What happens? It's restored. It is re um, regenerated, and you you walk out the other side, you know, feeling like okay, I'm at peace with that now. It's no longer a crisis in my life. I've come out of the underworld, and now I'm in the springtime. The old mythology connected to the eighth house has to do with Persephone going into the underworld, where she was there for six months of the year with Pluto, the god of the underworld. And at the end of that six months, she was permitted to go home and spend six months with her mother above the earth, on the earth. And that's when Persephone returned to the springtime. That's the energy of what we see in the eighth house. It is not all disaster, disaster, disaster in the eighth house. Yes, it's the underworld experiences, but it's also the emergence out of the underworld experiences into the blossom time, into the plenty, into the sunshine, into the abundance. So this could herald for you guys the beginning of that phase because new life new restoration emergence into the springtime can come with the sun making a trine to pluto under this energy i would also say that because of pluto sun conjunct denebula in the eighth house it's a wonderful time to ask the universe for what you want to ask the higher beings to ask the the entities for what you want it could also be a time to ask your partner for what you want as well because this is the house of intimacy maybe you've always wanted 
I don't know, crazy example, but there's a house of sex. Maybe you've always wanted something in the bedroom, like some sort of, oh, let's dress up or, you know, let's play this game or whatever. And you've been afraid to ask. And now under this energy, you can ask for it. You can get what you want in that realm, you know, have a lot of fun. Um, Maybe under this energy, you might like to ask, you know, your grandfather, look, could you put in your will this uh, particular painting that you have, grandfather, because um, I, I would really love to have that. And when you're gone, would that be possible to, you know, you can ask for some will or legacy to sort of favor you in some way um, under this energy. And you can often receive it when we ask. This is sort of a, a, uh, a well, it's a once in a lifetime, as I said, transit because the sun is conjunct with Denabula. And that's never going to happen again when we have a trine to Pluto. So um, especially for you guys, because Denabula is an occult star and a star of astrology, you could ask for something in astrological realms and receive it. You could ask the divine for astrological knowledge. You could ask the divine for knowledge of hidden secret texts as well. Um, Ancient wisdom that just comes to you. That could happen for you on this day if you're Aquarius rising. So uh, ask the divine for spiritual, occult, mystical knowledge, and you could very well receive it under this very special influence. So a very exciting placement that could unfold for you as Aquarian rising sun or moon people. For lovely Pisces, Pisces rising people, well, this energy is falling in your seventh house, and this is a very important placement. On the 17th, Pisces people will be experiencing a new moon in their seventh house. This is an angular house and it's a very karmic new moon that's making aspects to the nodes. It's what we call a transiting skip step. And um, because of the karmic nature and because of the angular house activation that's occurring here, it's going to be very powerful for you. Now, I go into great depth with this particular topic in my new moon report available to my patrons. Um, The link is in the description below. For the price of a coffee every month, you can get a very in-depth for all signs, new moon report, full moon report, and a specialty astrology video every month. This month, I'm preparing a video all about the nodal return and the nodal inversion and how it affects us individually. That's going to be available. um, And the new moon report for this particularly karmic and powerful new moon in your chart um, is coming out for you uh, this this coming week on Patreon. So do check that out. But a couple of days before this powerful new moon, we are actually having uh, a, a trine from the sun to Pluto. And this is a once in a lifetime trine. The reason that is, uh, the sun trines Pluto twice a year, but um, it is this year it's happening while the sun is conjunct the fixed star Denabula. That's not going to happen again. That's a once in a lifetime thing. So because of that energy of Denabula playing into this, it makes it quite a special uh, particular configuration. For Pisces rising people, our willpower that is strong under this influence and our ability to restore and transform and rejuvenate something happens in relationships. So it might be, it's not that a relationship's coming back into your life, but it might mean that you can invigorate a relationship that you thought was dead, a relationship that you thought, this is just not happening, you know, I, I, I'm over this. You can breathe new life back into a relationship under this energy. You can, um, you have the willpower, you have um, the support from the divine to reinvigorate something that had no life now that could be a business partnership it could be a relationship with clients as well because this is the house of the other and any kind of contractual relationship is seen from the seventh house it is also um, a marriage relationship or a committed type personal partnership so it's in these realms that you can breathe new life that you could restore something that you can bring it back into being and trans in a transformed way if it comes back to life for you if a relationship you thought was dead comes back to life for you it's not going to be like it was before it will be transformed as is the nature of the pluto influence here this energy is also a very good energy for asking for what we want from the divine asking for what we want from the universe We just might see it given to us. And if we don't see it instantly on this day, we are likely to set the wheels in motion at the very least. What is it in the realms of partnership that you want to ask the divine for? What is it that you're looking for in a relationship, in a committed partnership? 
Today's the day to ask the divine for those things. What is it that you're looking for in a business partnership, in business collaborations? What is it that you're looking for from your clients and your relationship with your clients? I would encourage you Pisces people, I'm Pisces rising, I'm going to write down on this day, what do I want in a relate in a you know a, a partnership? What do I want in a business relationship? What do I want in a relationship in the relationship with my clients, with my patrons who I pray for every day? What do I want in the relationship with my YouTube followers every day? What what is it that I desire here? What do I need to ask the universe for? That it, that is the day, the fifteenth of September, when you can receive or set the wheels in motion for the dynamic of that relationship to unfold for you. So whether it's an existing relationship that you have, whether it's a fresh relationship, this is the day to ask the divine for something that may very well be granted to you under this influence. If you are Aries rising, if you are Aries rising people, well, this energy is falling in your sixth house. So you're having a new moon falling in your sixth house. This is a very important new moon, Aries, because it is making an exact square, what we call the transiting skip step, to the nodes. And therefore, there's a lot of karma going down here, especially as this is falling for you in one of the more challenging houses in the horoscope. Now, I am providing each month and very in-depth for all signs new moon report a full moon report and a specialty astrology video available exclusively to my patrons. For the price of a coffee every month, you can have access to these videos each month that I'm producing. And, uh, and I'm going in depth with this karmic new moon this week. The video is going to be up this week. Plus, I'm also preparing a nodal return and a nodal inversion video to tell you all about what that means for each sign. So this is a very, very powerful energy I'd encourage you to check that out if you're interested in knowing more. But two days before this, uh, this particular new moon in the sign of Virgo, we're having a very special Sun trine Pluto. And it's very special. This happens twice a year that the Sun trines Pluto. But this, this time it's special because the Sun will be conjunct the fixed star Denebula. That's not ever going to happen again. Not in your lifetime. That the Sun will conjunct Denebula while it trines Pluto. It's not going to happen for you apart from this particular day. So it's a very special day. It's a day when we have a, a good energy of willpower and the ability to transform something. This is going to have to do with the sixth house. This is where you can transform something. Maybe you've had a conflict going on with someone. Maybe someone's taken you to court and you're fighting someone in court or something. Um, maybe there has been some sort of health issue that you're experiencing. Today's the day where your willpower can transform something and you can rejuvenate something. Maybe you can, uh, I'm not saying that you can resolve a court case or resolve a health issue, but you can uh, transform how you see it or how you're experiencing it and you can actually um, see some restoration. Maybe you're in court and maybe there's a chance to sort of, well, look, I'll make you this out-of-court offer and there's a bit of discussion that ensues that can um, sort of restore a relationship. I mean, it's never going to be restored to the same level if you're in court with somebody, obviously. Uh, but there, there's certainly the ability to regenerate something, renew something, restore something under this energy. Might be uh, you, you get the chance to restore a relationship with the employees uh, that you have. Maybe you get the chance to renew some sort of diet or exercise routine or health uh, activity that you, you've been undertaking. Maybe, you know, it's been six months since you've been to the gym and you're like, you know, I'm just so unfit and I just want to get back into the gym. Um, you know, I'm in Victoria, we're in lockdown, we can't go to gyms and it look, looks like we're not going to be able to for months and months. You know what? I'm going to go and blow, blow the dust off that old gym equipment out in the garage. So away you go. You restore something to life. You rejuvenate something uh, to life and you rejuvenate and restore to life your home gym because it's a better option than doing nothing at all. There's an example. So it's something to do with your daily life, your daily routines, your health habits, your exercise, your diet, something to do with conflicts that's restored, that's rejuvenated. Not only that, but because of the nature of the sun uh, and in this, this trine aspect, conjunct Denebula, you can ask for something under this energy and very often you may receive it. So you can ask something of your employees under this energy, you know. Uh, could you 
do X, Y, and Z for me? And it's likely they'll say yes under this energy. Uh, you can ask something of your enemies, you know, uh, like you're in court. Look, can we resolve this out of court? I'm tired of this, don't have the time, don't have the money. Can we reach a settlement outside of court? They may very well say yes under this energy. This is the day when we can ask for something and it can actually be done for us. So, you know, ask the divine for help with a diet. Ask the, uh, the divine to provide you a means of exercise that mightn't have been available to you. Ask for um, support with a health issue uh, that can, can be very beneficial. Now, you mightn't see the results like that, but you can certainly set the wheels in motion under this energy for benefit to um, unfold. If you are Taurus rising people, this energy happens to be falling in your fifth house. Now this could be Taurus rising or sun or moon, anything is fine. On the 17th, we're having a new moon in the sign of Virgo, your fifth house. Now this is a very blessed house. This is the uh, second most blessed house in the horoscope. But this is a very karmic fixed, uh, sorry, a karmic new moon. And it's falling in the house of good karma for you. So there's a lot of benefit and potential that's available to you under this new moon's energy because it's a skipped step transiting new moon. New moon is here making a square aspect to the nodes. This is a transiting skip step new moon. And I go into great depth about this new moon on my Patreon page. I you know, expand on it all for all signs and what it means. Um, and every month I do a new moon report, every month I do a full moon report and a specialty astrology video um, as well that's available to my patrons for the price of a coffee every month. You can have access to this extra information over and above what I provide here on YouTube. And of course this month the focus is on the, new, the very karmic and in your case very beneficially karmic new moon in the sign of Virgo. Plus I'm also preparing a nodal return and nodal inversion video that a lot of people have been asking for that's um, going to become available. But that's what's occurring on the 17th. On the, on the 15th, we're having a, a, a trine from the sun to Pluto. It's a very special trine from the sun to Pluto. A, a Pluto trine sign occurs twice a year. But in this case, it's very special because only once in your lifetime are you going to have a trine from the sun to Pluto while the sun is conjunct the fixed star Denebula. This is going to give you a lot of willpower and the ability to restore something that has to do with your fifth house. So it might mean that you have what it takes now to restore a relationship with your children that might have been estranged or, or a lover. It might be that, you know, you, you went on a date six months ago with someone and then nothing fizzled out and nothing ever happened. Well, under this energy, that can be restored now and renewed now. You can renew your acquaintance with that person and go on a second date or a third date and get things bubbling again in that area. Uh, this is a house of romance and dating. Um, as I said, it's a house of children. So if you, things have been a bit out of kilter with your children, you can restore that now. You can refresh that now. You can reinvigorate that relationship with your children now. Or maybe it's some issue that your children are experiencing. Maybe, uh, you know, your children have been having trouble with friends or something like that. Under this energy, that can be restored. That can be renewed. That can be refreshed. So uh, issues that your children are experiencing can go through uh, a bit of a blossoming, a bit of a uh, renewal now as well. This is also the house of hobbies and your creative expression, plus pleasures and what we do to enjoy ourselves. So it's under this energy um, of this trine on this, the 15th of September that you can be very blessed with a rejuvenation of hobbies and interests. Maybe, you know, like me, you love sewing, but you haven't touched a sewing machine for, I don't know, nearly 10 months and you're like oh my goodness I just want to get back into my hobby because I've missed my sewing machine and so you get back stuck into doing some sewing again there's a rejuvenation of interest in a particular hobby or a particular field of interest also the trine from sun to Pluto is indicative of being able to ask for something and actually having great momentum to uh, sorry, uh, manifestation to receive it so you might ask something of your children under this energy, you know, come on guys, let's all of us from now on pitch in and clean the house <laughs> and you might just receive it. Oh, lo and behold, miracles uh, still do occur in the modern age. Um, the, the other way it could play out is you might ask something of a lover and you might receive whatever it is you ask from the lover, but you've got to ask, you've got to put it out there under this energy. It's no use for wishing on a star this energy requires you to make it happen. Well, not make it happen, to ask for it, and then you may receive. It might land in your lap. 
So it could be from lovers, it could be from children, but it also could be from, you know, um, maybe a karmic manifestation. Maybe years ago, you donated um, all your savings, or maybe you were at like, I don't know, 14, and you'd saved up all this money, and you decided, you know, years ago when you were 14, you were going to donate all your money to some charity. And you can <laughs> call in that karma now under this energy. This is the house of good karma. And with this beautiful trine to Pluto conjunct in a bulla and in the energy of the new moon that's playing out too, you could call in, you know, hey, years ago I donated every cent that I owned to some charity um, and I really need help now because I'm really struggling now. Not that we give charitably in order to receive back. I'm not saying that that's our motivation for giving and receiving, but um, it, this is the house of good karmic fruit and maybe you've done some kind karmic act, some kind sorry charitable action in the past that can now bear fruit for you and you can ask for that to be the case you can ask for look if I've done anything good in past lives can it come back to me this week please divine energies because I really could use the support now if there's anything if I've got any wishes on a star left sitting up there if I've got um, any good karma owing to me can we fruit that now because I'm really needing it at this time? So there's a few different ways that you can be sort of working with this. You can ask lovers for something. You can ask children for something. You can ask divine benevolent karma to bless you. Uh, you could um, simply just ask the divine for support in some way, shape or form and you may see the answers manifest in a beautiful way for you. If you are Gemini rising, oh dear, it's stuck there. If you're Gemini rising, this energy is falling for you in the fourth house. Now, this is a very, very important placement. We're seeing the new moon fall on the 17th of uh, September in your fourth house, the house of your foundation, the house of your core, your um, the depth of who you are, the legacy that you've received from those who've gone before. And so this is a very karmic new moon that's occurring. Not only that... It is, it is occurring in a square aspect to the nodes, which is what we know as a, a, a transiting skip step. And because it's a new moon, this is very important energy uh, occurring on these very angular houses, which are highly, highly activating. So for you Gemini rising, this is a very special new moon. Now, if you want to know more about this new moon energy, um, I provide a full in-depth analysis of the new moon uh, and the full moon and a specialty astrology video every single month. So you get three, three extra videos for the price of a coffee every month, basically. And I'm going into great depth with this new moon video, new moon in Virgo, because it is so important. It's so karmic and um, probably in my estimation, one of the most powerful new moons for the year because of this. So check that out. The link's in the description below if you're interested. But a couple of days before this, on the 17th, we are having a very special trine from the sun to Pluto. And it's special because it's conjunct the fixed star Denebula. Now, the sun trines Pluto twice a year. So that's nothing unusual about that. It's, it's something we go through twice a year. But only once in your lifetime are you going to have a trine from the sun to Pluto while there is a conjunction of the sun to Denebula, the fixed star. So this is, this is very unique, very special, a once in a lifetime um, trine from Pluto to, to sun to Pluto rather. What does it mean? Well, it means we're going to have a lot of willpower and ability to restore something to do with our fourth house. Maybe you've been having some difficulties with um, a mother figure or a mater someone in the maternal lineage or some a woman in, in your life and it's been fractious and it's been difficult. Under this energy, you can restore that relationship. Under this energy, you can breathe new life into that relationship and reinvigorate that relationship in a beautiful way if you need to. Maybe you've been having difficulties in the home. Maybe there's been problems in the home. Under this energy, you can actually restore and reinvigorate your home domestic environment, both physically bricks and mortar and emotionally with your family as well. So it's, it's highly transformative and it's restorative under this energy as well. Quite literally, you can um, restore something to do with your home. You can, you know, renovate something. I want to point out though, we are still, uh, as we're doing this, we are under the energy of, where is he? Mars retrograde up here. 
it's not a good idea to initiate anything new in Mars retrograde period. So if you're going to restore something, if you're going to renovate something, it needs to be something that you've been planning for and preparing for um, throughout this year. You can actually enact it and, and, and take action for it now. Uh, but if the initiation arrives for you on this day, like, oh, you know what? I, I could paint that wall pink. You know, if that's what happened, don't go there because we should never initiate anything new under a Mars retrograde influence. But if you've been planning for it, restoration, go. It, it can really um, happen for you. Um, this is the house of, of our home. So you can, as I said, restore something in the home or in the garden particularly. Uh, you know, maybe you've got an old veggie garden that's overgrown with weeds and you're like, I'm going to fix that up. I'm going to go and pull out those weeds and plant a heap of cabbages and zucchinis and I'm going to grow my own fruit and vegetables. That's the kind of thing that we can see happening here. This is the house of um, to do with the land and the earth, farming, agriculture, um, gardens, homes, property, you can restore something, reinvigorate something and breathe new life into something to do with those things. This is also um, an energy where we can ask for what we want and we can actually receive it. So I want to say, you know, fourth house things. What is it that you want in fourth house realms? Do you want a new home? Do you want a bigger home? Do you want a smaller home? Do you want a, a more, you know, a abundant garden you know do you want better soil to grow gardens like what is it that you want that has to do with fourth house things do you want a better relationship with family do you want to connect more with your mother um these are all the fourth house things and this is where you can ask for something and receive it the universe supports you on this day to receiving what you ask for in fourth house realms now it mightn't happen instantaneously but you're certainly going to set the wheels in motion by asking the divine the higher realms for support on this day regarding fourth house things. Make the most of that. It's a special privilege to be able to, to ask for that divine support on this special day. If we are Cancer rising people, well, the energy, let me just get that solid there. The energy of the new moon that's falling on the 17th of September in the sign of Virgo is falling in your third house. This is a very special new moon. It's highly karmic because it is making a transiting skip step to the nodes. Now I go into great depth about this particular new moon on my, for my patrons. Now for the price of a coffee every month, you can have access to my video, in-depth video on the new moon, in-depth video on the full moon every month, and a specialty astrology video every month. Obviously this month it's the new moon in Virgo, highly karmic, very powerful new moon probably in my estimation, one of the most powerful new moons for the year, especially for you guys, because it's making an aspect to the 12th house node, 12th house north node in your chart, which is all about past lives. So karma is very, very predominant in this new moon energy for you cancer rising people. I also am preparing a video on nodal returns and nodal inversions that's going to be available to my patrons as well. Um, so you can get all that in the Patreon um, space. Check it out. It's in the link below. Now, a couple of days before this very special new moon, we are having another very special sun aspect, and this is the sun trining Pluto. Now, this happens twice a year that the sun trines Pluto, but this time it's very special because only once in your lifetime are you going to experience a sun trine Pluto while the sun is in conjunction with the fixed star Denebula. So this is important. What does it mean? Well, it means that you are going to have strong willpower and the ability to transform something that has to do with third house things. Maybe it's a relationship with your siblings, brothers or sisters, and you know, maybe it hasn't been good with your brothers or sisters and you need to transform it and your desire to make it better. Under this energy, you can do that. You can breathe new life in it, into it. You can bring back the springtime, if you like, of your relationship with your brother or your sisters. You might be able to restore some old talent or skill that you haven't, you know, utilized for years. Maybe when you were a teenager, you learned to play the saxophone, but you haven't done that for years. And you, under this energy, you're like, you know what? I, I really want to be able to play the saxophone again. So you get out the saxophone and you restore and rejuvenate that old skill, that old talent. In fact, any old skill or talent that you've had for years that you have ignored or forgotten about or whatever, you can regenerate and renew under this energy as a cancer rising person. It might be that you liked to write when you were young or like I said, play an instrument or do some sort of 
I don't know, needlework or craftsmanship or woodworking or, uh, you know, something like that. You can also restore your networks. And it's not necessarily a house about close intimate friendships, but it's a house to do with your uh, small group connections and and the, the networks that you have. So maybe you haven't caught up with friends in quite some time and you haven't been able to be social for quite some time. Under this energy, you're going to get the chance to restore that, renew that, refresh that energy uh, that you have with your networks and your friendship circles. So a lot of blessing here. Um, also, it's a house of commerce and trade and small business. So maybe you had a small business running and it suffered maybe say in Victoria under lockdown situation that we're all currently in maybe there was some suffering there um, regarding a small business that you had well you might get the chance to reno um, renovate it rejuvenate it refresh it with some new idea some new blessing that comes your way some opportunity that lands in your lap that can ha uh, come from this particular beautiful trine energy that's taking place this is also a time when we can ask for something from the universe and it can be given. It's, it's, a t it's, one, it's one of those special days in the year when if we ask for something, it can actually manifest. So this can be very powerful, obviously. What is it that you want in third house realms, Cancer Rising people? Do you want a small business of your own? Are you sick of working for someone else and you want to actually make money from your own skills, your own abilities, your own talents? Ask the universe for support for that now. Maybe you've always wanted something uh, from a brother or a sister. Now's the time that you can ask them and you may actually receive, you know, some support, some backing, some uh, piece of wisdom, some piece of knowledge, maybe to learn a special book or something like that. You can now ask and you can receive. This is also a time when you can ask for something from your support groups, your, your small groups, your networks, and you can receive something there as well. If you want to ask the divine for certain knowledge and and wisdom because the third house is a very curious house it wants to understand and so you can ask for answers now you can ask you know the universe to give you the clarity you can ask the universe to give you the knowledge uh, or you can ask the universe for someone to cross your path who gives you uh, a different perspective on something um you know shared you know knowledge that's what the third house is it's not about top down kind of teaching it's about well what did you experience oh really I experienced that oh tell me about how that worked out for you you can have someone cross your path who can help your knowledge grow and increase through those shared that shared momentum now that comes with a third house energy and finally thank you for waiting till the end Leo rising people sun or moon as well is also applicable here um, thank you for your patience for you guys, this new moon energy of the sun conjunct uh, the moon in uh, Virgo on the 17th of September is falling in your second house. This is an incredibly karmic new moon and that is because it's making a transiting skip step to the nodes. And in this year when we're seeing so much karma unfold, <laughs> this is a very important new moon obviously. Now. I go into great depth about this new moon with a, an extensive new moon report for all signs. And I also every month provide a full moon report for all signs and a specialty astrology video for people who are members of my Patreon. For the price of a coffee every month, you can have access to the this extra knowledge over and above what I provide for free here on YouTube. So if you're interested in knowing how this karmic new moon is going to affect you, do check that out. The link is in the description below. I'm also preparing a, uh, a video on nodal returns and nodal inversions available for uh, people on my Patreon as well. But prior to this very karmic, very important new moon energy, in fact, I'd say it's the most important new moon of the year, to be honest. Um, we are seeing uh, a, a trine from the sun to Pluto. And that happens twice a year. So it's not an unusual transit. But this time, you're having a once-in-a-lifetime trine from the sun to Pluto while the sun's in conjunction with the fixed star Denebola. What does this mean? Well, it's going to give us the chance to transform something to do with second house things, to breathe new life into something, to regenerate something and renew something to do with second house things. Maybe second house resources, maybe our money has been on the decline and we've been like, oh my God, how am I going to provide uh, for my family or how am I going to you know, generate enough income to pay the mortgage or something. And under this energy, we can breathe new life 
into our resources, our ability to have enough money, to live, to survive, to thrive. We can breathe new life into some resources that we have. Maybe, I mean, this is the, the stuff we own is seen through the second house. Uh, I'm a Leo sun and I have been actually probably feeling into this energy already and completely rejuvenating my everything that I own. I'm clearing out my cupboards. I'm doing the spring cleaning. I am, you know, throwing away old furniture. I'm well, not throwing it away, selling it online, <laughs> getting rid of the old furniture that I don't need anymore and, you know, cleaning out my clothes and just really rejuvenating everything that I own and under this energy it's a great time to do this um, we can benefit from that so we refresh we rejuvenate the resources that we need for living you know clean out the pantry clean out the shoe cupboard clean out the, <laughs> the you know everything the the veggie patch you know whatever we are um, we, is a resource for our life that supports our body and its journey food shelter clothing that can be um, renewed and rejuvenated under this energy this is also a house of self-worth and self-valuing. So very special for Leo people. This is a time when you can rejuvenate your sense of self-confidence and self-worth. And that's very important to Leo people. How they are valued in the world, how they are respected in the world. Leo people treasure these things. And it's very important that a Leo person feels that they are loved. You might at this time go through a rejuvenation process with that. Find a renewed way of, of feeling loved and valuable in the world. Um, refresh how you feel loved and valuable and cherished in the world. So that can be very, very special for Leo people under this energy. We also can see um, that because of this trine and the conjunction of the sun with Denebula, it's a chance to ask the divine for um, what we want and we may actually just receive it. Or at the very least, we'll set the wheels in motion if it doesn't happen instantaneously. This is a time, Leo, rising sun and moon people, when you can ask the divine for support materially. You can actually maybe ask people for some kind of financial support. You might be able to ask a bank for a loan now and actually receive it. You might be able to ask um, to use some piece of land for a community garden, you know, and you might actually receive it because uh, this second house does have connections to food that we grow. Uh, as well and nature and the environment so that could, that could work out like that so uh, you know you could ask for something to do with resources that support your body's journey for for living you may very well receive it under this energy you might get the support and abundance and blessing that you desire now if you ask on the 15th from the divine for that support uh, you might also be able to ask for um, the ability to uh, experience love and cherishing and self-worth and self-valuing in some way and you might receive that in your life through maybe someone crosses your path who um, uplifts you uh, somebody sends you a, a letter of appreciation or somebody um, you know or maybe you know it doesn't have to be coming from external sources maybe your own self-worth is uplifted and valued when you step back detach a bit and look at who you are on the planet and 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 realize the divinity of your own nature and you're like wow you know i really love myself and that's okay you know so you can ask the divine for support with those things as well self-worth self-valuing self-love too under this particular sky so all in all, a very exciting week ahead where we may see a bit of a shift, <laughs> hopefully, in the blessing that's available to us, especially if we have the eyes open uh, looking for it and, uh, and uh, expecting blessing to flow. So let's close with a, a, a short, um, well, what we would term a prayer or a meditation. Divine energy of love, we ask that the angels, the entities, the beings of light surround the earth at this time. As we're going through the shift, the up-leveling, some would say, and I agree, the, the chance to transcend. We ask for divine support and we also pray for the divine energies who are fighting a spiritual battle right now on our behalf. There is corruption in the world and there is um, righteous love in the world. And we ask for support for the Righteous Love Brigade 
and we pray for the angels and the entities and the beings who are fighting for the righteous love to win out over and above corruption. So we ask for this because these are changing times, times of renewal, times of transformation for everybody on the planet. And we thank the divine for the love that surrounds us, that is available to us. We ask for it to enter in to our personal lives and into the collective. And so it is. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this rather long Astro Weather Report. There was a lot to cover. And I look forward to sharing a new Astro Weather Report with you next week.